In this video, we're going to continue with the quantum scattering theory. Uh, but in this video, so this is going to this video is mostly just a preamble to the Born approximation method for quantum scattering theory. And so, this video, pretty much the uh, the purpose is to get from this this differential form of the Schrodinger equation here into an integral form of the Schrodinger equation. And then we can use that, as we'll see in the next video, to do the uh, Born approximation method and the Born series. Uh, and so <clears throat> in this video, so we start here, we have our differential form of the Schrodinger equation. We do some of the uh, substitutions that we're sort of used to, and we get to this form of the Schrodinger equation, where Q is equal to this right here, this 2m over h bar times the potential times the uh, the wave function there. And then K is the, this uh, usual form right here. And so Again, as is often the case in quantum mechanics, we're making these substitutions because we want to get this into a form that we can actually work with. And so this is of the form of the Helmholtz equation. Uh, and so this right here is the Helmholtz equation, where you can see if you just added this to both sides that you'd get this equals zero. So it would look just like this, but it would be equal to zero. And so we want to find a Green's function that solves the Helmholtz equation for a delta function. And so a Green's function is a function that can uh, we can think of it analogously, like uh, like uh, the inverse of a differential operator. So it takes a differential operator to a delta function, similarly to how an inverse matrix takes a matrix to the identity matrix. So uh, we have here, this is what it looks like when we take a matrix and this inverse matrix, uh, and uh, we do matrix multiplication to get it to the identity matrix. Uh, similarly with a Green's function, so we have some operator here, and we have a Green's function for that operator, and that will uh, take it to this delta function right here. So physically speaking, what the Green's function is, is a potential formed by a delta function source for that potential. So put it another way, the differential equation that we're trying to solve is the response, uh, so the potential that results from the delta function source. So that would be like the particle uh, that has some kind of potential. And so we're trying to find the wave function given a potential that is the response of a delta function source. And so that is uh, essentially what we're trying to do here. And so uh, we have this uh, form of our equation here. So we can express the, uh, the wave function here as an integral that looks like this. So we have our Green's function here. This is that Q that, uh, that we had from up here. Uh, and then uh, we are doing this over the three dimensions of R here. Uh, so we have our operator, so we do that on both sides of this right here. So we're taking that operator to both sides of that. Uh, but the part in the square brackets is just the delta function. So this right here is just our delta function right here. So we can put that delta function in. And so we want to solve this for the uh, g of r here. Uh, which can be done using a Fourier transform. So this is the Fourier transform here. So we're saying that our Green's function here is the Fourier transform of some other function here, this function of S. And so then applying our operator right here to both sides, uh, so we apply that to both sides. So uh, we are doing the, this operator on this right here, and so that will give us negative 2s squared times our exponential function right there. Uh, and then we end up with this right here as the definition of our delta function. And so we put 
both of those in. And so we end up with this right here, which came from uh, this side of the equation right here. Uh, and then we have this right here, which is just equal to our delta function, uh, which means that our g of s here has to be this uh, has to be this function right here. And so uh, the reason we uh, can see that is if we put this uh, into here, uh, so we put this in for our g of s right here, uh, we uh, end up canceling everything out. And so we end up with this right here, which is just this side being equal to this side, and they're both the same. And so that's how we know that this is what the g of s function has to be. And so we put this into our integral here. So the Fourier transform that uh, we're saying that this g of r here is the Fourier transform of this g of s. Well, we just found what the g of s is right here. So we put that in for our Fourier transform. And so we are going to integrate over the spherical coordinates. So we can first just uh, integrate over phi because it's uh, circularly symmetric. And so that will just be 2 pi here. Uh, so we will end up with a 2 pi right here. Uh, and then we use that this uh, s dot r here is equal to s times r times cosine of theta. Uh, and so we put that into our our uh, exponential there since that has that s dot r right there and so we put that into our integral there so we still have to do these two integrals one for the theta and one for the uh, the r or the radial part of the equation and so we first do the theta part so we're doing this here so this is our theta part so we integrate that and then we uh, evaluate it at pi and zero and so we end up with this right here and so then we can put that in and now we have to do the integral for s here and so we put this into our our integral right there and so we want to integrate this for s uh, but this is even around the origin, so we can just do this. So instead of going from 0 to infinity, we can go from inf negative infinity to positive infinity, but we're just dividing by 2. So this just becomes goes from a 2 to a 4. Uh, but then we run into this problem. So we have this here in the denominator. And so that means we have these poles at s equals plus and minus k, which would be where this would be 0 right here. So it would be dividing by 0. Uh, and therefore, this would go to infinity. Uh, we therefore need to use the, uh, the, the Cauchy's integral formula, which is this right here. Uh, so we need to get it into a form that looks like that. And so we'll make some substitutions here. So we'll first do the substitution using this trig identity right here. So this uh, sine function right here will become this, these two uh, exponentials here over this 2i right here. Then we use this right here to get this, uh, to get the i out of the, uh, the denominator there. Uh, and so uh, we distribute the negative sign into this. And so we see that we have this k squared minus s squared. It'll now be s squared minus k squared in the denominator. Uh, we factor out this 1 half and then factor this s squared minus k squared here. So this half is just coming out here. And now we have s minus k times s plus k like this. So we distribute the s uh, in the numerator and then split the integral so it looks like this. Uh, so we are just taking, we're taking this integral here, but we're just dividing it. Uh, so we have the positive, uh, the positive exponential right there and then this negative exponential right there so we are subtracting there then we just make these two substitutions right here so we end up with this right here so now we can use our Cauchy's formula here 
for our uh, s minus k and s plus k being equivalent to this z minus z naught here. Uh, and so we, then we can integrate around the poles using the path integral. So we're doing a path integral around the poles. And so what this Cauchy's integral formula says is that if we have this function f of z uh, that has a pole around this point z naught, then the path integral around that pole will be equal to 2 pi i multiplied by the value of the function at uh, f of z naught there. And so it looks kind of like this, where we are doing this, this sort of integration, this line or path integration around our pole right here. So that is our z sub naught. And so this in, is in two dimensions what these poles look like. So we have a pole that looks like this uh, that goes to infinity. And we can see we have this red line here. So this actually has two poles here. So we have another pole right here that goes to negative infinity. And so we're just integrating around that pole. And so uh, we're doing the same thing here with this blue one. And so that's what we mean by a pole. It's just where it blows up to infinity right there. So we'll do a, this contour integration around s equals negative k and s equals plus k. So the first one, we're doing it around s equals plus k. So we're leaving this out of the contour right here. And then the second one, uh, we are including. So this actually should be more like this. So we have that there and that there. And so then we would, uh, we would then want to remove these because we want to integrate around that s equals negative k right there. So if we uh, just sort of adjust this so that it looks more like this. So in this one, we are integrating, we are including this s equals positive k. And then in this one, we are including the s equals negative k in there. And so this looping around that we see right here and right here, uh, so that would actually happen where uh, s is at infinity. So we kind of keep going uh, to infinity and and negative infinity on both of these before we loop around. But, uh, you know, it's kind of impossible to show that here. So we're kind of showing that uh, at finite points here. But this we could think of as being at negative infinity and this at positive infinity on both of these. So with the first integral, like I said, we're including this s equals k and excluding the s equals negative k. And so what we do uh, with that then is we we do the uh, line integral and we will end up with this right here. So we have our uh, our i pi, which comes from this 2 pi i here, which remember is 2 pi i times our function, uh, but we are uh, crossing off that 2 right there and then that k right there. So we end up with i pi e to the i k r. We do the same thing for our i2 here. So we end up with negative i pi times e to the i k r. And so that gives us this for our greens function. And so we are uh, subtracting a negative. So that ends up being uh, addition here. So we have this 2 here. This will cancel out with that 8 and become a 4. And so we have this for our greens function, which is a spherical wave. Uh, and so that uh, this kind of concludes the part here where we were uh, sort of trying to find what our Green's function is. This is our Green's function that we obtained after sort of doing all of the stuff from above. Uh, and so this is kind of the, uh, the like I said, the, the take home from that first part of the video. Uh, so we therefore have our wave function. So we have our wave function here, which is equal to the integral of our Green's function uh, times this Q uh, function here, which remember is is this right here, uh, then integrated over three dimensions here. And so we then put this uh, this into our wave function here, and then this into our wave function here 
we do a little bit of algebraic manipulation and we finally end up with this right here. So this is the integral form of our wave function here. Uh, where this part right here is the free particle, so that would be like the incident wave. Uh, and so this uh, this comes from the fact that, uh, that the general solution to our Green's function is actually this. So the Green's function that we found uh, up here, but then we have this Green's function here, which satisfies this right here, that our operator acting on it is equal to zero. And so it satisfies uh, this equation. So we have the Green's function here, and then this uh, that we can add on to it would be equal to our delta function. And so uh, it satisfies the fact that, uh, that this acting on our G naught R is just zero. And so it's, uh, it's the general solution to this because we are defining this as being equal to uh, zero when we act our uh, our operator on it right there. And so that is the free particle part of this, where this, uh, this term right here, uh, this integral right here is the scattered particle uh, that we will have. And so this is the integral form of our Schrodinger equation, which is what we will be using in the next video uh, to do the Born approximation method. Uh, but anyway, like I said, this video was uh, sort of a preamble to the Born approximation method that we'll be looking at in the next video. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot of, you know, just math stuff going on in this video, just a lot of sort of, uh, you know, solving of differential equations, sort of very general in order to get our Schrodinger integral form here. And so if you got lost in a lot of this math here, the, the, the main take home message is that we are going from this differential form of the Schrodinger equation and we are getting this integral, uh, this integral form right here. And so that is kind of the take home message. And so, like I said, in the next video, we'll be using this integral form of the wave function right here to do the Born approximation method. But anyway, I don't want to ramble too long. I hope you found this video helpful and I will see you in the next one.